All right, guys, so it's time to finally dig into this 4D6 laptop. I've been looking to get into this one for a little while. And I'm just taking a quick look at it first. Uh, I don't see there's like no screws on the bottom. I mean, it may be underneath these little rubber feet, but I'm not sure yet. I noticed this little cover right here seems loose. Oh, okay. So that lifts off. And it looks like... Hold on, let me get some light going here. Alright, now we got some light. It looks like just a little parallel card attached there. It looks like there may have been like optional cards that could attach here. So that's kind of interesting. And it looks like they can just be removed. So the first two screws I found. All right, and that lifts right off. It just attaches with a connector. And you can see where it attached, and there's a jumper right there, which I'm not sure what that's for. It's probably not marked in it as a laptop. Alright, got these little doohickeys here. I'm not sure what these do either. They'll pop out of here. Oh, okay, so they're little covers that cover up the keyboard screws. Yeah, they just lift out, and you can see the keyboard screws in here now. That's a pretty thick piece of metal on the bottom here. It's a pretty heavy keyboard. That's got a bit of weight to it. All right, so you see hard drives right here. Uh, there's a ribbon cable coming over here for the floppy drive. I just want to very gently lift these connectors up. All right, so we got that cable out of the way. And it is a little Seagate drive, model ST9145AG. So let's take a peek at the bottom. Let's see if there's anything hiding under these little rubber feet. Yep. There's where the other screws are hiding out. Alright, let's just get these last four screws out of the bottom. I don't think there's any more. Something holding us up right here. Ah, I see what it is too. All right, if you look right where this door door is at, if you close this door, it reveals a little screw right there. That's why you never just start pulling these things apart because you never know. All right. Now, see if you guys can see in here, we got uh, the cables coming from the display here, and they're, they're like held down with this tape.
Alright, so now, let's see, one, two, three cables total. Alright, these are going to be a little tricky. Alright, so we got the ground taken off. Now I just got to pop this connector out carefully. Alright, that's got some fragile little pins in there. Alright, so there's one connector. There's one more down here. And we got one more connector right here. And that one's like down in there. Alright, so all our screen connectors are now disconnected. So that means we can take the whole palm rest and screen and just set it aside. This is the power supply right here because it's got the, the battery attaches to it. And then if you follow this cable here to the bigger connector, it looks like it runs past some shielding here over here to where the DC jack plugs in. So yeah, this right here would be the power supply. And I just try to get everything unplugged that I can. Alright, so check it out. That's the power supply in this laptop. We got left, I think just this little connector right here. Well, LED board and the PS2 port. All right, so everything's been disconnected from here. I think we just pull pull some screws out, and get this motherboard right out of here. All right, that's why I always take my time looking these over. Uh, right here. You see there's a standoff right there, that's got to come out. Alright, looks like two more standoffs here are going to have to come out. Now with the standoffs out of the way, all the board comes right out. Get that old tape out of there. Here's the battery we got to replace. It looks like it's got like three little batteries there, but they're not leaking or anything. They're just dead. There we go. There you can see here's our RAM. Our, uh, that's our video chip right there, I believe, which is actually bigger than the Cyrix 486 CPU, which is right there. So there you go, that's what it looks like. It's obviously a non-replaceable uh, CPU. Cyrix CX486 SLC. And the, uh, the thermal grease that's on there still seems good, so that's pretty surprising. But anyways, when I get cleaned up, we'll put a little fresh goop on there and uh, uh, we'll go through and see what we can do about this little battery here. So I just desoldered the battery, say from the motherboard there. There were just uh, through pins that went through on the back here. I got to figure out exactly what these are. I'm pretty sure I know what they are, but we'll just dissect this a little bit and make sure. Okay, so before everything gets buttoned up, let's take a closer look at all the different parts here. Um, here on the motherboard, you can see the jumper extension wires that I soldered for the new battery, uh, all the ribbon cable connectors and bio stickers. And over here is what I think is the BIOS chip next to the coprocessor socket along with the connectors for whatever expansion was available for that port at the time. 
on the back side, uh, you can see the heatsink for the CPU that covers the RAM and the video chip also. And interestingly, a couple of Oak Technology chips make up the chipset. If you look up the, the chip numbers, uh, there were actually 386 chipsets, so that's not really surprising for a 486 SLC. And there's a few other controller chips for whatever uh, things and stuff are, are on this notebook. The, the case bottom is pretty much empty. Uh, there's nothing really remarkable here. And here we get a better view of the hard drive. It's a Seagate 9145AG. It's a 122 megabyte, two and a half inch IDE drive that seems to function perfectly. Here you can see how populated the bottom of it is. It's like looking down on a city and there's one of those uh, pain in the ass connectors for these old two and a half inch IDE drives. And with the screen bezel removed, you can see the video cable and the video controller board uh, attached to the LCD on the left side here. And if we go over to the right side, you can see the uh, CCFL backlight and the inverter board that powers it. And that's pretty much the tour. I did get a battery ordered for this, and the battery came in. And uh, I know it says lithium ion, lithium ion on here, and I, it's not what I ordered, so I really hope this isn't a lithium ion. It's supposed to be a Varda replacement battery. The only problem is uh, the battery that was in here was mounted vertically. This is, of course, horizontal. If I can get it open here. Give me a second. I'll just rip it. This one is horizontal like you would see on, uh, you know, your standard uh, AT motherboards and stuff. But, um, yep, this is what we're going to use. This is why I have uh, extender wires um, installed on there. So it just has to be replaced again. You can see it's not a lithium, lithium ion. Is that focused on there? I don't even know. There we go. You can tell it's not a lithium ion. Um, but yeah, what we're gonna do is uh, solder this to lead wires and then shrink wrap the whole thing. And that way it'll be easier. If it ever, you know, in the future starts to corrode, um, it won't be setting right on the motherboard, which we got luck on this one, the battery. Well, after I dissected the old battery, uh, you can see there was some corrosion in between the cells starting, but it hadn't leaked out yet, so that was good. And uh, and also this will be easy to replace, just snip the wires and solder a new one on. So yeah, we'll be good to go now.
All right, so I had to do a change of plans here because the, the battery, I thought, you know, being uh, hor a horizontal battery wouldn't even be as tall as the original battery, being that the original battery was vertical, but it was. So you see we had to uh, extend our wires. We just ran some extension wires up through here without having to drill any holes or anything and got it right into this expansion bay right here. Uh, the only thing that's in here is this uh, serial card that goes in here, and that only covers up like that much. Um, if you ever want to add your math processor, there's the, the slot is underneath that. Um, the other thing that, the other accessory that I know went in here, uh, I'm not sure how many others went in here, but I know there was a uh, track trackball accessory that went in there. So this will probably never be used. Those accessories will probably never be found. Um, I'm not sure if a uh, video accessory went in here or not. I have no idea. But um, yeah, that fits in there perfectly. So now we have that out of the way. It's easily replaceable if it needs to be replaced. Uh, everything is soldered to the battery, shrink wrapped, and the battery assembly itself is shrink wrapped. So uh, yeah, I think that'll take care of that. So now we just got to go get this back together and see if the uh, if it'll keep the time and and uh, try and get something loaded on here. All right, got it all back together. I found a uh, serial port mouse, and I even found a. Uh, something I can use as a mouse pad and I even got a VGA hooked up to it so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens when I turn on here let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, see if it's gonna load anything I did say Windows was installed on there so and you see we got the old uh, LCD screen we got the white background with the black lettering on it but we see much better here if we focus on the CRT. All right, so let's see if we can get into Windows. There we go, Windows 3.1. All right, and there we go. Mouse works. Okay, well. I guess mouse doesn't work. Okay, so we can we can get around with the keyboard on here. Alright, here we are on C drive. Let me just take a quick look at whatever the heck is on here. Alright. That's kind of cool. All right, let's see if we get out of that. All right, uh, control panel. Sweet. First a point mouse. I don't think that's the mouse I got here at all. No, this is a Microsoft. Hey, there's a switch on the bottom. I wonder what the switch does. Oh. I don't think I like what that switch did at all. This is Microsoft or mouse system. I switched it to mouse system and it went wonky. It still seems to be wonky. All right, well, piss on that mouse then. All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video here. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to go through, I'm going to get DOS uh, 6.2 installed on it, Windows 3.1, and... Uh, even Doom. I mean, I just installed DOS on it quick and, and Doom, but we'll go through. We'll get all that installed and uh, check it out in the next video. So, uh, you guys stay warm. We'll see you on the next one.